The modern bulk is the absolute best possible way we know of to maximize muscle growth, minimize fat gain, and ultimately rapidly transform your physique within a year's time. Now, up until this point, and even still today, a lot of people have no idea how to bulk correctly. They're using outdated methods based around outdated science or outdated sources such as pro bodybuilders from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. I'm here to tell you that that is holding your progress back. Sure, you might still build an insane physique, but you can do it in far less time, see far better progress, and avoid all the bullshit that comes along the way from doing this incorrectly, all right? So if I had known this stuff myself, I'm going to break down for you A to Z in this video based on all the modern science we have, okay? All the science leading up to all the meta-analyses, everything we have over the last 20 years combined with everything before that. Now we actually understand so much better, so much more accurately how to set up a bulk. I'm going to walk through every single aspect you need to set up this bulk perfectly. And if you apply it meticulously, you will easily double your results in half the time. Had I had this information myself, I would have saved at least seven years of trial and error. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, we do have to address the old bulk first. What were the issues with the old bulk, which again, a lot of people are still doing and a lot of people will continue to do until this modern bulking method becomes more mainstream and understood. So the old bulk, gain weight one pound per week or faster. In fact, the thing here is most people didn't even bother tracking their weight. And again, still don't. They just said, okay, I need to up my calories. They didn't bother figuring out exactly how much to up it by. They just said, I'm eating this, roughly this amount. Let me start by jacking those calories up. Let me increase the meal size. This is what I did. The first time I always struggled to bulk, none of this information was available. And what I did for my first dirty bulk, which, uh, you know, helped me see some better results than what I was seeing before because I wasn't eating enough. But what I did for that dirty bulk was I simply took every meal that I currently ate and I did it twice. So I just doubled the meal itself. And this is what a lot of people do because one, they're lazy and they just think that it's an easy way to get fast progress and fast gains. You're going to sabotage yourself down the line. It's going to be a lot more demotivating. But also people don't realize you have to be a lot more meticulous if you want to maximize results in half the time. If you didn't want to, you wouldn't be watching this video. So they gained weight too fast. And as a result or to accomplish this, they overshot calories and they continued pushing and shoveling down food again. I have made all these mistakes myself. Keep that in mind. I'm going to show you a picture now as to me at my absolute peak dirty bulk. And you'll see what I mean. Uh, disregard excess fat gain. This was a big issue with the old bulks. Okay. They were convinced that sheer mass was being put on. And um, they thought that all of that excess weight, I would gain three pounds a day, consecutive days sometimes. I gained up to 25 pounds in a single month from this dirty bulk that I'll show you right now, which has me looking like this. Okay. This is back uh, 430 weeks ago. So in 2015, I was here at about 200, just over 240 pounds. All right. Now, it might seem decent. You might look at this and say, whoa, you look really good, whatever. There is no abs here. These lines, that's just the angle, fasted in the morning, like perfect timing. I had a lot of fat. My waist here was somewhere around 38 inches. Okay. I'm six foot two. And uh, while I do have a decent amount of mass, most of this was fat. It just appears to be more muscle because you can hold more muscle when you gain excess body fat. Yes, you will hold more muscle, but you lose it all when you cut. So it's not worth it in the end. Um, in fact, there's a very clear study that when this came out, it made us all start to question the dirty bulk method. This was what began that process. And this is a randomized control trial uh, that was uh, conducted by Garth and colleagues. And this showed uh, back in 2013, a very clear sort of insight that they had two groups. One had a higher caloric intake uh, than the other. Both were in a surplus though. The one with the smaller surplus ended up gaining basically the same lean mass, very similar amounts of lean mass. The group with a higher surplus gained significantly more fat mass, okay? So it, it started to become a little bit questionable for us. Like, okay, maybe we can't force feed growth, which in fact is the case. We cannot. So that was a meta regression I just showed you on long, or sorry, that was a randomized control trial that showed that a... Um, that excess fat gain does not mean more muscle gain. Yeah, in the moment you'll get stronger, you'll look and feel bigger, you'll fill up bigger shirts. Do not think that that means it's more muscle. Naturally, you can only gain so much muscle at a certain rate anyways. Trying to force feed that growth is excess fat for no other benefit, 
okay? And in fact, for a lot more consequences, as we'll soon discuss. Uh, they gain strength rapidly, okay? This, this is another deceptive but kind of cool and fun thing about the old bulk is it was all deception. If you start eating a shit ton more food, you're going to get a shit ton stronger. You're going to get a shit ton bigger. But that doesn't mean that in the end, when you want to build an incredible physique, it's going to be worth it at all, right? Um, so actually, the strength gains that you saw were generally poor in relative terms because you're achieving progressive overload, maybe a little bit faster, sure. But relative to the amount of weight you're gaining at such a rate, it actually was a decrease in strength most of the time. Um, so for example, if I actually went back here, you would see that I have a video of me back at this weight hitting 315 pounds for one rep. Okay. And I barely got it absolutely brutal form. This is me somewhere around 240 ish pounds, let's say. And look, I barely, he didn't touch it. I barely got it. 315. I'm weighing almost 250. Yeah. I thought it was the strongest I've ever been, but really that's not impressive at all, okay? That's that's pretty bad. That's that's pretty weak. Um, but again, it's deceptive because you're like, I've never lifted three plates. Oh, I'm getting so much bigger and stronger. No, you could have achieved so much more if you didn't do that. Uh, adding tons of volume, this is another one, like sets, to absolutely annihilate your workouts and force your muscles to grow. Um, here's the problem, okay? You have to cut 40 plus pounds typically at the end of a dirty bulk. Some people cut 70 pounds. I know people that cut 70 pounds for their shows and stuff like this. Brutal. They look the exact same every time or worse potentially than they did before, okay? If anything, all of this starts to cause is a cycle of like unhealthiness on both ends. You get really, really lean, you're super unhealthy. Really, really fat, you're super unhealthy. Now, here's the thing. Uh, you know, reveal more mass is built, but a grueling process. So even though you dirty bulked, yes, oftentimes you'll have more mass than if you didn't bulk at all. Uh, however, this is what makes people think that the dirty bulk is superior. It's not because even though you've revealed more mass by the end, what you don't realize is that grueling long cut re resulted in a lot of strength and mass loss. Okay, now I actually have a full meta regression here that showed these longer term cuts impaired muscle mass retention and or gain significantly. It didn't impact strength as much because strength can still improve with neurological adaptation. But this meta-analysis and meta-regression showed that these longer-term cuts do have a negative impact on lean body mass. And obviously, this is where we start to realize that, okay, well, gaining weight, uh, gaining excess weight does not lead to excess muscle gain. And having to cut longer is the result of that. And you lose more muscle when cutting longer. So it's a net negative at the very most at this point, okay? Um, so with that said, some or more mass could have been achieved with less time uh, cutting, less muscle and strength loss as a result, with a smaller surplus set up properly and adjusted carefully with better training. Because the thing is, when you're overeating on calories, it also masks the fact that your training is not optimized, right? That's a big one that people don't realize. It's like you're, you're getting stronger, and so you mistaken this increase in strength as actual progressive overload due to hypertrophic adaptation. However, by the nature of being more massive, you are able to push more weight, right? Uh, mass or force equals mass times acceleration. If I gain 20 pounds by, by default, I will bench press more if I'm on the same routine. Just by that doesn't mean I put any more muscle on. That's the crazy thing, okay? And so if we understand all of this together, now we start to be able to break down the fact that these dirty bulks are not really, you know, they'll serve you if it's your first bulk ever. They can serve you, but they won't serve you, serve you as much, okay? Um, so I personally did three dirty bulks. Again, this took me seven years to learn any of this. Three dirty bulks. The first one I just showed you was uh, an extreme uh, difference. So, or sorry, the first dirty bulk that I did was an extreme difference in my physique. I remember my first dirty bulk, the people that, let's say, hadn't seen me in two months or three months saw me and they're like, whoa, what happened to you, right? And the reason for that is because I had put on very little muscle to start. And so when you go from not eating enough, so you're not putting on the muscle, to all of a sudden you start eating in a surplus, any sort of surplus, whether it's a small one, but especially a big one, yeah, you're going to gain weight rapidly and people are going to perceive this weight gain as, holy shit, you're getting huge because you are, but not in the most optimal way.
Okay, um, so that first one was a big difference for me. Uh, again, could have still seen a better result if I didn't do it, but the next two were basically an entire waste of two to four years. That one that I showed you was one of my last dirty bulks. I'm guessing my last dirty bulk, like real dirty bulk. And after that, I cut back down to about 200. I didn't look all that much better. Okay, it was only until I finally executed a lean bulk properly about a year and a half after that last dirty bulk where I saw almost beginner level progress. Okay, like I saw such rapid muscle gain by that time of whatever I was eight years in, even after doing those dirty bulks, I was amazed and I was still lean and I wasn't 240. I was like 213 by the end of it. And I, I, it was insane. I felt like I was a beginner, even though it was completely the opposite of the approach that I thought I had to take all the years prior. Okay, so that's the old bulk explained and some of the issues with it let's talk about the new bulk now and here's the differences and where they lie and then we'll actually talk about how to set it up so you can accomplish this now the gain weight uh, the rate of weight gain should be between 0.25 to 0.75 pounds weekly now as a beginner who hasn't been training either at all or optimally for six months of doing so training optimally you can actually get that up to about one pound per week and have most of it be tissue okay so obviously a beginner has far more muscle they're able to gain and at a faster rate and so for that reason yes you can have a slightly higher rate of weight gain the one pound per week but again it's not going to last that long and if you go over that it's still excess fat okay aside from that if you're doing a, a lean bulk very quickly after you start if you're a complete beginner or if you're doing your second one or whatever you're going to be better off aiming for a more conservative rate of weight gain, okay? And uh, we have a meta-analysis, the one that I addressed from above, which shows that muscle can actually still be gained at a maintenance in trained individuals, which means that main gaining is not, that's not what this means, that, oh, you should main gain because you can still, no. What this means is that because you're conservative, even if some days you're not in a surplus for sure or a big surplus, you'll still synthesize muscle because muscle gets synthesized not only already at a slow rate, but at a slower rate per pound of muscle you gain. And so it's unrealistic to expect you to gain one pound of muscle every single week unless you're a complete beginner. And so for that reason, if you are in a very conservative surplus, which we'll explain how to actually break that down, then that's okay if some days you might be a little bit up and down, right? Your weight isn't going to be jumping up very rapidly. It's going to be very gradual, very slow, but that's okay because you can still synthesize muscle at the appropriate rate regardless as the meta regression we have here shows. Um, now, you want to set a longer time frame for the bulk. Again, previously with the dirty bulks, like for me, I gained 25 pounds in a month and I thought that a lot of that was progress. Realistically, maybe three pounds were muscle, okay? Now, you think three pounds of muscle in a month is great. At 22 pounds of fat. So in order to lose 22 pounds of fat, what is that? Minimum 16 weeks of cutting. So I'm losing one or two pounds of muscle in that anyway, so it's a net one pound gain in a month. Uh, why would I have to go through all that pain just for one pound gain in a month, okay? Um, so set a longer time frame. 10 months should typically be the absolute minimum. That's my sort of twist on it. I think 10 months should be the minimum, but multiple years can work too, right? If you're not trying to compete or you do want to compete but later down the line, you just want to build an incredible physique. It's going to take some years of doing this properly. But again, if you do it properly within one year, the changes will be so significant regardless. But then you just keep building on that, right? Um, it's better to set a timeline rather than a goal weight. Typically, you can kind of mix the two. You can say, okay, I'm going to go for three years, but my first milestone is 200. And if I hit 200 and I'm not looking all that great to continue it, maybe you aggressive mini cut and then keep going after that to, to continue for the three years total, right? Um, so keep that in mind. And again, if you're wondering how to set all that, that's what we're about to discuss. Keep cardio going and improve cardio during this time, okay? Keep your metabolism high. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I didn't mention from the old bulk was people avoiding cardio. Oh, I don't want to do any cardio. You're going to lose your gains. Like, remember that fucking retarded, like, stupid-ass myth? That was a dumb myth. Like, don't do cardio. You'll lose your gains. If anybody still subscribes to that uh, mindset, concept, or understanding, just know that individual could not be further from the truth. That individual could not know any less 
about how muscle growth and fat loss works. And the crazy thing is, is there's a lot of people up there with decent physiques that believe that. And just because they have this decent physiques doesn't mean they know anything about muscle growth whatsoever or the actual physiology behind it, how to optimize it. They maybe just got blessed with great genetics and I'll make another video discussing the importance and the power of great genetics, but the downsides of it and vice versa, okay? Nonetheless, cardio is important. Keep it up. It's gonna improve your performance and your training while you're getting bigger and that's going to translate to more gains. So cardio actually equals more gains when programmed than correctly. Keep your activity levels high. We need to be healthy during this process as well, okay? Higher protein intakes, less crazy high carb approach uh, is probably ideal also for reasons I'll talk about shortly. And we wanna stay somewhere below a 20% body fat. Um, again, some people would argue this and say, oh no, like 25 is totally fine and so on and so forth. The problem is, is we all can debate what percentage body fat looks like what at the end of the day nobody really knows precisely because everybody looks different at a different body fat percentage the point is is somewhere around 20 percent so you know where i am here this is probably over 20 percent again i'm genetically somewhat blessed in the fact that i don't continue to gain rapid amounts of fat in this midsection area i gain a lot in my lower body so as a result i would chalk this into plus 20% body fat, okay? Too far, not necessary. And some people with this amount of body fat on them, they'll look even worse on in the midsection, okay? But maybe leaner arms, for instance. So the point is, is abs are really blurry or almost non-existent. You're too far. It's time for a mini cut and we'll talk about stop losses here, okay? Aggressive mini cut when and if needed. And I just dropped a full video discussing and explaining 101 exactly like this, how to go about a mini cut properly so you can uh, retain muscle while shedding body fat, okay? Now, let's move on to training. Obviously, extremely important. Uh, I'm gonna break down the basics for this. I'm not making this entire video on how to optimize your training because this is gonna be a separate video. It needs its own topic. But for now, understand the following per perimeters. Moderate volumes to start. My recommendations have changed over the years to a, and it's been consistent now for a while, three to 10 sets per muscle group per week for your first training block or mesocycle of optimized training, meaning high intensity, every set between zero and two reps in reserve. That's a high intensity. You're getting close to failure. Maybe not failure every time, but close. We have the entire meta regression on failure training here that does make it clear that training closer to failure is better to maximize hypertrophy, okay? When you start to get further away in terms of reps and reserve, then you're exponentially lowering the stimulus of hypertrophy. However, when you hit failure every single time, though that last rep is the most stimulative in theory, it's also the most fatiguing, so fatiguing in such a way that it could actually hinder recovery and hinder being able to manage a little bit more volume and therefore maximize growth. And so the sweet spot seems to be so far, a safe recommendation is somewhere between zero and two reps in reserve, okay? So some every set you wanna take somewhere around one rep left in a tank, let's just put it that way, which means if some sets you're a little closer to two true reps left in a tank or some sets you hit failure, that's totally fine, okay? Falling somewhere within there most of the time is probably ideal, and you're gonna do that for three to 10 sets per muscle group per week. The higher priority muscle groups can take higher qual uh, quantities of volume within this range, and the lower priority takes lower. And again, just run this for one mesocycle, a training block, 10 to 12 weeks, gather the data and see what to do next. We'll talk about a little bit more how to adjust. Resting two to five minutes between sets allows and ensures that you're hitting this type of quality for this type of quantity, okay? And from there, you wanna ensure one to three rest days weekly. The point here is at least one rest day, okay? Depends on schedule and all that, of course, but if you're training seven days a week, it just doesn't really make much sense anymore. Um, there was many times where you see it on my channel, I was training seven days a week. I like doing it. I was training with higher volume loads at the time, okay? So slightly lower intensities, more drop sets, more volume load, more sets in general, but lower intensities, eventually it caught up to me. I wasn't recovering anymore, and I started pushing a little bit higher intensity. My body started breaking, okay? It was too much. Now, I do two days on, one day off. That's my current mesocycle and it has been so much better for me. Rest is important, and had I taken rest more seriously when I was 
bulking up all the times that I had bulked up in the past. Okay, currently in a bulk right now. Make sure you follow the playlist if you want to follow along with my current bulk, all optimized based on all these principles. Uh, then I would have made more gains in less time. All right. Uh, so with that said, proper form. So training, uh, tracking training sessions to ensure progressive overload is actually occurring. This is key. Okay. And by the way, if you need or want something to help you not only optimize all your training according to these principles, or even, even try my mezzo that I just mentioned, and you want a training app that syncs with that workout program and allows you to track easily and see progressive overload every single week, tracks your weight, tracks your rep, etc., then that's what I actually offer in my Elite Physiques Pro program. You can check out the link for that down below and join. It's a uh, essentially paid community with coaching from me and optimized training plans that you can take and put into this app that I also offer. I give you everything you need, nutrition, coaching, support, everything. You want one-on-one coaching with me for a extremely reasonable price, plus a digital community, plus everything optimized, that's the place to go, okay? I also have free training checklists. If in the meantime, you just wanna check out my free stuff, all of that is linked in the description below. It's gonna help you optimize instantly based on these principles. Now, one more thing that I wanna add in now uh, that we're starting to see in data which is two to eight second general tempo for reps as a suggestion for technique, okay? Now, this is a research review, uh, Lane Norton's research review to be specific, and here they actually tested, uh, or rather created a narrative review looking at the current literature on the different variables of exercise technique and how to best manipulate them to maximize hypertrophy. So in other words, how important is technique really for hypertrophy? Now, keep in mind, we are still learning more about this currently, uh, none of this stuff is really set in stone, but based on how they tested, it does seem that a certain tempo within a wide range, mind you, at the moment is going to be important. In other words, flying through the reps too quick is likely not ideal based on what we know so far, but I think it just makes sense. We also have, I also have some data here on eccentric training where they tested different variables as far as length of the eccentric, how controlled was the lowering phase of an exercise, and they found that it's slightly favored in one in the case of one muscle group here, the vastus lateralis, um, or rather the vastus medialis showed greater growth from slower eccentric duration. However, the lateralis and rectus femoris showed similar increases in hypertrophy uh, between two and four second durations of eccentric movements. But the point is, is at the very least, with a longer eccentric, slightly longer, uh, you will match or potentially in some cases surpass uh, the potential for hypertrophy. In other words, slow and controlled on the way down. Not too slow. A three-second count is what I like to rely on. That's what the data seems to suggest the most. And an explosive uh, rep on the way up, okay? So keep the form clean. Avoid the momentum. Uh, that video I showed you of me benching, I mean, this is not good form, guys. This is not good form, okay? Like, let's see a bounce at the end you see that bounce like look at the arms that sticking point like what and by the way what is the point of one rep for this to take a video of it and post it this was 2015 take a video and post it online like that's what the i'm, I'm risking injury i've built almost no muscle stimulated almost no growth from this just because i can show it online because i thought that that meant anything it literally means nothing <laughs> in fact it means the opposite when you're experienced enough you start to realize that People that are doing that shit don't really know what the fuck they're doing. And it's as simple as that. And if anything, they're just training less efficiently. Okay? So the, the point of this is keep proper form and track your training sessions. Once again, you want to optimize all this instantly. Avoid the trial and error. Actually get it to a point where you're starting with moderate volumes and building up appropriately from there. Elite Physiques Pro is the way you'll do that. Within five minutes, everything's set up for you. Link in the description below, okay? Let's talk about nutrition and optimization. Here's how we're going to achieve that rate of weight loss that we discussed earlier. 0.25 to 0.75 pounds weekly. Ideally, we're looking at a 5 to 10% surplus. Now, we do have a study here showing that, okay? In fact, it's a review, not a study, but... This review is based on a few important studies uh, that we that were conducted on the energy surplus. In fact, Lane Norton, in his reps review, also had a breakdown of this, which I can find for you very briefly. Uh, and essentially, what they found was the whole dirty bulk thing, it, it, it's already done, okay? As I discussed at the beginning, for all those reasons mentioned, but also, 
What they really found when we're diving into the research a little bit deeper, as I'm doing for you here, is a 5 to 10% surplus is really all you need, okay? Um, so this is Lane Norton's research review. I'm, I'm part of some other ones. This one just looks the best, and I feel like they do the best job of making it concise. The point here is a roughly 5% over maintenance is, uh, is probably all that's needed for most people to maximize muscle gain while minimizing fat gain. Okay, so we see that here. Again, I go 5 to 10%, and that seems to be the best way to go, just based on the current literature, okay? Based on a couple studies we've got here, this seems to make the most sense, in which case, what you're gonna do is find your maintenance calories currently, which, if you're watching a video like this, hopefully you're already tracking your calories, and you have been for a while, you understand roughly where your maintenance is. If not, just use a quick calculator, find that if you need to, and 5 to 10% surplus from there, okay? From there, protein. Let's talk about protein here. One gram per pound or more of your body weight, okay? This has been something that I have recently, in fact, for a little while now, been recommending ever since I've really dug deep on the research of this. And I have a full review on the nutrition setup conducted by Alan Aragon, who's extremely credible, has run a lot of the literature himself, not run, but, you know, uh, authored the studies or led the studies. And uh, this really breaks everything down very clearly as to why slightly higher protein intakes may be ideal if you want to maximize muscle and minimize fatigue or minimize fat gain. So remember, 5 to 10% surplus, but deriving the surplus at least somewhat from excess protein at the very least, doesn't hurt. At best, could improve satiety, okay, which I understand is not always a problem when bulking, but could improve thermic effect. The thermic effect from protein is slightly higher, so could improve metabolic uh, adaptation, so could increase metabolism a little bit more, which means you could eat more food. Um, and simultaneously, it's harder to transfer protein to fat, right? your body does not have an efficient way of converting protein to body fat nearly as efficient as carbs or obviously the most efficient being fat. So based on this entire review here, which is absolutely amazing, when we look at macronutrient composition, there's some evidence that showed that higher protein intakes, of course, when they looked at you know, some people having lower than the recommended daily average uh, allowance of protein, Obviously, higher protein to a certain extent is going to be important. So somewhere around that 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of body weight shows that this is usually enough to maximize growth. But there were some cases where they did see some. They weren't statistically significant, but still there was some favor positively for a group that went way over on protein. Okay, so significant uh, fat mass decreases in a high versus normal protein group despite the high group reporting a significant increased calorie intake compared with baseline. So in other words, like I just mentioned, if you're deriving some of that surplus from higher protein intakes, then the chances are it's only going to be better for you. Obviously, we're going to assume that you don't have any kidney issues. If you have any issues with protein digestion, this could nullify this point and just set it to the bare minimum of 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of body weight. You'll be fine. I personally have been more closer to 1.4 grams per pound of body weight, and I have found that it has worked a lot better in keeping the body fat off as I'm building more muscle. At the very least, if your protein is higher than this minimum recommended dose based on the literature that we have, at the very least, you're building the same muscle or more, okay, and or you might put on, in fact, you're likely to put on less body fat than if you're deriving that surplus from, of course, more fat, as it's far easier, it's it's so quickly converted to excess body fat, and from carbs, which is also more efficiently converted to body fat than protein is, okay? So uh, macros on protein, that's my case for why slightly higher proteins could be a good idea, all right? Fats, 20 to 25%. This is just unanimous across the board. I believe it was uh, the NSCA or NASM, um, or I can't quite remember, American Journal of, I can't remember what it was, but there was a, a basically big governing body of, of you know, uh, certifications and all this stuff as far as coaching and, 
and athletes and all that. That's sort of the athlete, American Athlete Association. I can't quite remember what it was. They have a recommendation that if I, it turns out that all of the literature that we have up until this point shows was pretty accurate in recommending somewhere between 25 to 35% of fat. Of course, this is going to be just to regulate hormones, keep those in check. Um, but yeah, so 20 to 25% when you're in a surplus, the amount of fat is not required to be as high. Okay, because percentage of calories may not be the most accurate way to set your fats. It may actually be more accurate to set it per gram per pound of body weight, kind of similar to protein. And so it scales according to your body weight. Whereas you could be a very similar body weight, but all of a sudden you're eating way more calories. It doesn't require you to eat more fat. You just need to eat a bare minimum for your body weight, for your total mass, to be able to regulate your hormones. And so kind of making a percentage may not be the best. So that's why in this case, 20 to 25% will typically keep you despite a increase in calories, somewhere in a general vicinity where your hormones are taken care of and the rest is going to go to carbs, okay? So with the carbs, uh, you know, it's as simple as the remaining calories. After protein is taken away, I recommend trying. If you don't have any issues, trying to get that protein up slightly higher. I'm 200 pounds. I'm currently getting between 250 and 270 pounds of protein each day. And it's been working great, okay? So try starting with a higher protein amount when you're going to that 5 to 10% surplus. Uh, get the fats to about 20 to 25%, probably start on the lower side as well, and then fill in the rest with carbs. Now, 80 plus percent of your nutrition should be nutrient-dense foods, okay? Check out my full day of eating that I just posted recently on how to, you know, how I go about hitting my, all of my micronutrients, not just vitamins and minerals, that's not enough, tons of vegetables, big salad, lots of fruit. This is important during this time. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning, we want to be healthy during this process of maximizing muscle. The healthier we are, the more it's going to promote more muscle growth, okay? And less body fat gain. So eat similar foods daily that you enjoy just to make things easier here. Bulking can get difficult at times simply for the sheer amount of food that we're trying to intake. And so, you know, just prep some foods that if you struggle to eat enough, Prep foods that you enjoy that are relatively healthy that are easy to get a lot of calories in, right? So whatever those may be, very carb-dense foods, like some get some oatmeal in. Instead of cereal, oatmeal is a lot less volume, more calories. Like that's an example, right? Or if you struggle and you need to get some extra fats in, you're getting plenty of protein, but now you need some extra fats just to get the calories in. Maybe it's more peanut butter, right? Any sort of nut butters, stuff like that, and prep it ahead of time so it makes it easier to hit those nutrition targets, Okay. Now, keep in mind, I do also have a free nutrition checklist you can check out to help optimize this for a bulk specifically in the description below for free. Go ahead and check that out. Real quick, you'll go to my website like this in free tools. You've got all these free tools. Okay, you just click here, drop in your email, your first name, and you can get access to this stuff right away. All right. Now, let's talk about stop losses and we're about to wrap up here. So stop losses are just a fancy way that I made of saying, how do we know when it's time to take our foot off the gas, slow it down, pull back even, readjust, we've taken the bulk a little too far, we slipped up a bit, or it's just time, okay? Uh, we've been in a surplus properly for a long time, but now it's just, it's, you know, it's coming to an end. Um, or we need to keep going for another year or two, and we're getting too fat. Well, here's the thing, you can set a stop loss, which is basically a boundary that if hit or when reached, you could say, okay, this is the signal, it's time to mini cut, assuming you have to keep bulking, or it's time for a real cut, and I want to get shredded, right? For instance, you want to reach four to six uh, inches added to your waist before you decide it's time to mini cut. Like, if you're bulking and you've got another year to go based on your initial timeline and goal and based on how you're looking so far, you're like, yeah, another year makes sense. Then once you reach, like, let's say you wake up in the morning fast and you're like, I don't know, it feels like it's getting out of hand. And let's say you said that that four inches increase on your waist from when you first started, that's it. That's your stop loss. And you wake up in the morning, you start seeing that. You're like, okay, it might be time to mini cut before I can continue this bulk. Another example could be whatever roughly 20% body fat looks like on you. Um, and then what you're doing at this point when that happens is an aggressive mini cut for two to six weeks, Okay. Free mini cut manual in the description below, but you can also check out the video on how to do that. If you experience diet fatigue symptoms, a diet break, uh, and continuing from there for one to two weeks can be totally fine as well, okay? Um, now, as far as I have a randomized control trial showing the diet break benefits, 
that was for a cut. But the point is, is that a diet break isn't anything special, but it will help to resensitize uh, and, and essentially eliminate diet fatigue symptoms. In the case of a bulk diet fatigue would be like, you're really losing motivation, you're, you're feeling full all the time, you're not really looking forward to it, like sleep quality is declining a little, performance isn't really increasing in proportion any further, you're really starting to dread the bulk at this point. That's a diet, th those are diet fatigue symptoms. Now it might be time to either mini cut while you're at it instead of just a regular diet break where you're going to maintenance or maintenance for a week or two and get ready to get back into it. Really depends on where your body fat is at, where your mind really is at, and just preference as well, right? So that's the stop losses. Lastly, let's talk about tracking and adjusting, which of course is always something that we're going to talk about because it is of utmost importance. All right. So uh, track body weight daily, get weekly trends. Now, if you watch my content for all the years I've been posting, this stuff has never changed. All right. All that's changed is there's more powerful ways to do it as times improve, like as technology improves. Okay. So tracking body weight daily and get weekly trends. You can use my free physique tracking system or Elite Physiques Pro. Okay, whatever. If you want to expedite that process for an app to help you track this, see your weekly trends. The point is, is just track it somehow. There's apps out there to do it. Happy Scale is the one I like to use and I connect it to my Elite Physiques Pro app. Um, that's going to help. Okay, the point is, is just get something where you're tracking that body weight in and you're not missing any days. This is super important to make sure you're hitting that rate of weight gain. Okay. Uh, progress pictures every four weeks, measurements every four weeks, and tracking training and nutrition daily. If you want to maximize your results at any moment in your journey, or for that matter, in anything in your entire life ever, the person that tracks things meticulously to track inputs and as a result, what the, what the result of that input is giving them, that person will always win. It's just as simple as that, okay? So track this stuff. Adjust nutrition via cardio, daily outputs, and calories. So, if you need to continue the surplus, because, okay, rate of weight gain has been going great, but it's slowed now for the last two weeks, you're plateauing a little bit on that, well, it's time to get back into a surplus, or keep the surplus going. You can do that by, maybe you're still doing 300 calories of cardio per session, you're like, hey, you know what, I can afford to cut this down to 250 per session. That's going to get you into a surplus if you keep food the same, or you can just increase food. Or you can, you know, uh, decrease the walk. Or you say, you know what, I want to really increase food a lot more. Maybe you increase by 500 calories and then you bump your walk time up throughout the day. Your steps up slightly, right? There's really infinite ways to, to go about it. Well, not infinite. There's really only a few. But yeah, so figure out a way to do that. And uh, that's the adjustment. The point is to stay into the surplus. Trust the process. Um, adjust training sessions. Because you're tracking your training, because you're doing... Uh, you know, actual optimized training blocks. Now you're tracking these things. You're tracking based on the amount of volume, frequency, rest days, recovery, split, and intensity. You're monitoring and seeing how things go, and you're switching things up each block. You're coming to the end of a block. Cool. Time to build out your next one or select your next one. Like for example, in Elite Physiques Pro, we've got training blocks all optimized. You're about to finish one. Start looking at what the next one's going to be, or we can build you out a next one. Right. Uh, or, you know, you've got a, a, an option that looks like you want to try that one next. Or you want to actually repeat the same one because you feel like it's just been so great. Why why try and fix what's not broken? If it's really been that good and it's just been clicking that well, I would continue on with that. Okay? So you're just making sure that you're constantly adjusting as needed, gathering the feedback. That's the point of tracking things, gathering the data, optimizing, iterating, and you're going to get closer to quote unquote what's most optimal for you at the end of the day. So that's basically the bulk. Now, that you've watched this video, you should understand the issue with the old bulk, which you probably were under the impression of to some degree bulking in this manner, okay? So you've done away with this BS mindset and you understand why the new bulk is far superior based on all the literature we have, based on anecdote, infinite anecdote of all the people actually going through it with these parameters, and you understand how to optimize your training appropriately going forward for that, your nutrition, how to set stop losses to make sure you don't fly over on the bulk, which leads to all the negatives of the old bulk anyways. And you're tracking and adjusting things so that you're making the right adjustments at the right times and absolutely crushing it, seeing the best results, transforming your, your physique in rapid amounts of time, okay? That is what hopefully you should now have based on this video. Let me know what you thought of the video. I appreciate you watching. If you watch the whole thing, please comment below. I would be really 
curious to know who actually got through it, who likes this long form content. If you do, please drop it a comment. And uh, I'm also going to be dropping, I'm going to be showing you as I'm currently going through the modern bulk myself. I've already done this in the past, but I'm currently going through one now. And I want to show you how I go about all of these aspects, how I go about my training, how I go about tracking and adjusting things, how I go about tracking my progress, tracking my physique, how I go about optimizing my nutrition, hitting my micros, being nutrient dense, right? The full days of eating, etc. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet for whatever reason. I have a feeling that most of the people watching this, at least until this point, probably subscribed already. And make sure you also drop a comment. Let me know if there's any specific topics you want me to cover as well, or if you want me to go deeper or cover certain aspects of this. Maybe you want a shorter version of this. Like whatever it is, let me know. I appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next one, continuing to provide you with the top, absolute best tier content that I can, all in one, complete guides and videos to help you build your best physique in record time. As always, check the links in the description. I love you all. Thanks so much for watching. Talk soon.